All right, so you notice that this is 1 over 4, 1 over 9. Out. Okay, so we should see a pattern. 1 over 36, 1 over 49. So in your own words, can you describe to me what a negative exponent does? turns it into a fraction. Okay, so uh, how would you relate x to the negative 2 and x squared? So if x to the negative 2 is equal to what? 1 over x squared. So if we have a negative exponent, we move it to the denominator to make it positive. Or we basically take the reciprocal. If you think of x to the negative two, x and a two over one, we're like we're taking the reciprocal to make it a positive exponent. All right, when you type this in, you should got one. Why do you think one was still one? What's the reciprocal of one? One, yeah, one over eight, one over twenty-seven, one over sixty-four, one over one twenty-five, one over two sixteen. And 1 over 343. So, x to the negative 3. Yes, Joel? Question? Oh, okay, that's off topic. I'll answer that after lesson for you, okay? Okay. So, x to the negative 3, what would that be equal to? 1 over x to the positive 3. So, here's what we're going to cover today. A negative exponent... To make it positive, it needs to move from the numerator to the denominator or the denominator to the numerator. So if we have x to the negative n, this is a general rule, it would be equal to 1 over, or a to the power of negative n, a to the n's power, right? We move it to the denominator, we take the reciprocal of it to make it positive. So what about if our negative exponent's on the bottom? b to the power of positive n over 1. You're right. Or just b to the power of n. Do you need to write over 1? No. no. So you could also just write it as b to the power of n. And if we have a fraction, does that negative apply to everything inside? Yes. And so where is a going to go? Bottom, where is b going to go? Stop. What do we call that? Well, switcheroo, uh, okay, you can call it that. What else do we call it in math terms? Uh, reciprocal. I like to call it the reflipical, because then you remember the difference between inverse and reflipical. No, seriously, though. Because often students convert, uh, confuse inverse with reciprocal. It's a common mistake. So reciprocal is reflipical. We take the reflipical. Okay, so today we're covering dun 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 negative exponents. Okay, so uh, my advice to you is always try to get rid of the negative exponent before you deal with any other exponent law, whether that be the fraction of an exponent with a fraction or product law, all that good stuff. So here we have 4 to the power of negative a half. So how do we make that negative a half positive? Yeah. 1 over 4 to the power of 1 half. Now, what did I tell you about fractional exponents? What should we be thinking? Fraction. Turn it into a? Turn it into a? Somebody say it, please. Radical, radical. Fractional exponents turn into radicals. What would be the index here? The root. Which one's the root? Two? Would you have to write square root? No. And one, do you have to write that? No. Okay. So what's the square root of four? Two. Yes, Jimmy. So we, we got rid of the negative by moving it to the denominator. So that's what the negative exponent does. It moves it to the denominator to become positive. Or if it's on the denominator, we move it to the num numerator, and it becomes positive. So the negative exponent, in order to be a positive exponent, we have to actually move it, either up or down, depending on where it already is. 
okay? So the next guy, when we have a fraction, what does the negative exponent do? Flip it. Once we flip it, what happens to the negative exponent? It's now positive. It's now positive. Okay, you could have also thought of this guy as a fraction, 4 over 1, and we flipped it to 1 over 4. That would work too. Okay, when you see a fractional exponent, what do we think? You're right? We think, what? Can you push that away, please? And work on that. When we see a fractional exponent, what do we think? Radical. The square root of 16 over 9. What's the square? 4 over 3. Okay, good. All right. Now, when you have a negative number, do not confuse negative numbers with negative exponents. Negative numbers are okay. You can't have negative exponents, but we want we can have negative numbers. When you have a negative number, it doesn't mean they're both negative. It just applies to one of them. Lots of times they write it in front. So I, I like to rewrite that so it doesn't confuse me. Just put it with either one. Because it only, right, if it was with both of them, what would happen if you have two negatives? It equals a positive, but it's a negative number, so it only applies to one. Okay, so what do we want to take care of first? Yeah, the negative, which part? Negative exponent. So the negative exponent is a problem. So how can we take care of the negative exponent? Both flippical. And then what happens to the negative exponent? Well, bam. It's positive. Next step, Anthony. What would I do here now? You see a fractional exponent. Yeah, so we took care of the negative exponent. Now we have a fractional exponent. How do we? A radical. And which radical? What, what root would it be? The cubed root, the cubed root of 27 over 8. So can we take the cube root of, ne of 27? Yeah. yeah. 3, what's the cube root of negative 8? Negative 2. So you could write it as negative 3 over 2 or 3 over negative 2. It's the same thing. There's our answer. How's that so far? Okay? Okay, well, there's only one more page. It's a long page. Well, not so bad. <laughs> it's not so bad. Okay. How about, let's see how brave you are. Yeah, you're brave. I want you. <laughs> I don't know why there's so many D's. Oh, well. A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, I'd like you to try D, D, and E, please. Try D, D, and E. <laughs> the ones I so the 4 was moved to the denominator to make it positive. Once it's moved, what's left on the numerator? A 1. You can't have like, well, it wouldn't be a 0. It'd be a 1. The next guy, what would he become? 3 over 2 to the power of 1. Anything to the power of 1 is itself. So we don't need three over, just 3 over 2. Okay, the next guy, in order to get rid of the negative exponent, right here, what do we do with that negative exponent? We're flippical. So what will it look like? One over, oops, it's purple. One over eight to the power of positive two thirds. Good. So move to the denominator to make a positive exponent. Okay, when you see fractional exponent, what are you actually thinking? Radical. So cubic root of 8 all squared. What's the cubic root of 8? 2. 2 squared is 4. So 1 over 4. Hmm? As, it, it, it's 1 over 4, right? It's, not, it's different than 4. Because of that negative exponent. It moved it to the bottom. Oh, sorry. Yeah, to an 8. Why did I put the 1 where? Do 
here? Well, because it's when I do my radical, why do I put the 2 up here? Oh, because it's a fraction, right? It's 1 over 8. Two. Guys, can you please stop talking, Hayden? It's a fraction in a fraction. Okay, so what happened is once it moved to the denominator, this is just a 1 left behind then. You could, when you square root 1, it's 1. When you cube 1, it's 1. Right? So you could also do this problem like this. And then 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds, and then that applies to both of them. So you could have the cube root of 1 eighth squared, which still will leave you with 1 quarter. Okay, that would work too. Okay? Yeah? Okay, but we always answer the fraction. Okay. All right, next guy. Which ne which this negative does it matter who he applies to? No, just one of them. So what is he going to become when we flip it? Four over negative three to the power of positive three. Okay, what's four cubed? This is where memorizing helps. 64, what's 27, uh, what's 27, no, what's negative 3 cubed, negative 27, can that be reduced, can it, how can we check, we're not sure, fine, bet you are, okay, well, it can't, I know it can't, but I wanted to, we should be able to do it without a calculator, okay, if we see a decimal, what do we need to do with this decimal? Yes, Maddie. Sure. Yeah. No, because um, it, 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 these are both, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't reduce to four thirds. No, no, no. Yeah. You actually have to put it to the power. We cube both. Okay? If we can, we always reduce at the end. Yeah. Okay? Okay, what if we see a decimal? Guess what you're going to do with it? Fraction. So if this is a, what place value is that? The 10. So this becomes 3 over 10 to the power of negative 4. All right, next thing we have to get rid of. Yeah? So what will it become now? 10 over 3 to the power of positive 4. To get rid of the negative, we take the reciprocal. Okay, 10 to the 4. That's easy, because how many zeros will that have? 4. 3 to the 4 is 81. We square it twice. 3 squared is 9. 9 squared is 81. Okay. E. Do you want to try E on your own? The other E? Or is this, this is, yeah, the other E. You could try it. You could do it. First step, always get rid of the negative. Get rid of the positive. When you're done, check the board. So your first step was to flip this to make it positive 3 over 2. We see a fractional exponent. That means we need to change it to a radical. Square root of 16 over 9 cubed. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 9 was 3. Then we have to cube both, so 64 over 27.
I didn't reduce at any point. Uh, I don't understand your question, sorry. Yes. Yes. You got it. Okay. Um, let's look. I might come back to a couple of these in another lesson because they look really... No? Do you want to look at some of them today? Okay, well, let's look first at A. Okay. I just want to go through A, and then we're, you're going to have questions like this on your unit exam, written response questions, okay? So you want to star these for sure. You, they, you will have to be able to solve these. We're going to practice our exponent laws some more. What's today? Wednesday? So to, to more, in the next two days, we're actually going to be just practicing our exponent laws. So the fractional exponent, the negative exponent, and then the power law, product law, quotient law. So here, does anyone remember when we have two, the same base being multiplied, what do we do with our exponents? You add them. You add them. So before we move on here, okay, we can actually keep the same base and add those powers. What's negative 3 plus 2? Negative 1. Now, before we move on, we have a power to a power. Does anyone remember what we do with power to a power? Okay. Multiply. So this is, what's negative 1 times negative 3? Positive 3. Do two negatives equal a positive? So this, so we keep the same base and just add the exponents. Right, it's gone. So when we have like x to the a times x to the b, you have x to the a plus b. So you combine them. You keep the same base and just add the powers. The reason why, like if I have x squared times x cubed, well, x squared is x times x. And then x cubed is x times x times x, which is 5x's. x to the 5. There goes my... Okay? So we just keep the same base. Yeah? But some of you had four teachers in grade nine, so <laughs> we have to review some stuff. Yeah? Oh, oh, no, 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 you're so right. Thank you, Janae. Yes, they should be the same base. Thank you. Oh, break, thank you. I can't believe I wrote that. Should be the same base. Then we can add the powers only. Only if that's the same base. Yes, Brady. Yeah, by adding the power. So we added, um, let me grab my highlighter. Can you please stop talking, Carson? It's hard to teach over top of it. Okay, so here we have the same base being multiplied, so I've added those exponents. So combined into one base and added the power. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And a power to a power we multiply, so that gave us the positive 3. And now, last step, can we cube those numbers? 2 cubed is 8, 5 cubed is 125, and we're done. Okay, if, here's a little hint for you guys, if you can't reduce the original fraction before you cube it, you won't be, be able to reduce the, the future one. Yeah. If you had like 4 over 6 cubed, you could reduce that first and then cube it. If I could, right? Yeah. Okay, so in your unit exam, I know, but we have to, I have to over. right, but I'll also give you questions with variables, so you can't just type it into your calculator. Yeah. Um, so with the no, like, be well, we're simplifying. We're simplifying by just plugging into my calculator. Both, if it's numbers. If there's variables, then it's simplifying. You can't solve it because you don't know what those variables equal. Okay, Janae. Well, we could flip this here, but I decided to use the, the exponent law that when we have a power to a power, 
we can multiply them to make them one. And what this did is it take care of that take take took care of the negative exponent. No. No, no, no. You just multiply, you only multiply the powers. Okay? But you could have solved this if you wanted to use the negative exponent. Janae, you could have said, okay, we had 2 over 5 to the negative 1, all to the negative 3. So you could have first made this 5 over 2 to the negative 3. So flip that. Then flip it again to make it now a pos for this guy. Now positive 3. Right, so we skipped a couple steps by just multiplying the powers. You mean from here to here? When you're multiplying, you keep the base, you only have one of them now, and you add the powers. You only need one. Okay, so we'll review this more tomorrow. However, so your homework will mostly won't have questions like exactly this until tomorrow. And we'll go through some more examples like this tomorrow. But when you have the same base being multiplied, we only keep one of them and add the powers. Okay? When you have a power to a power, you keep that same base and just multiply the powers. So there's only one of them. There's only one 2 over 5. That's the base is 2 over 5. Okay? We will, we, especially if you had a rough year last year, for some of you, you might be shaking on some of your exponent laws. And this is usually the toughest part of one of, one of the toughest, tougher parts of grade 10 math. So we'll practice over the next two days. Okay? Your quote homework questions that you'll have are going to be like these examples. Okay? So you should be okay then, just practicing that negative power. You can get started. It's on page 233, number 3 to 13. So if you do, if you do two times 